when and how does this get better for Tesla shareholders? Does he eventually have to give up the reins to that company or does something get resolved at Twitter somehow? Well, look, something's got to give, but uh, the, the short answer is Elon is stretched. He's dealing with an implosion at Facebook. There are rumors about a CEO change at Tesla. And look, he's managing five companies. Who wouldn't be a little overstretched? But will the bears have been winning Tesla down over 50 percent since February alone, short sellers making eleven point five billion dollars. If you look at the numbers and you just put the politics aside, Tesla this year will grow from fifty three point six billion uh, in twenty twenty one to a number close to eighty three, eighty four billion this year. That's fifty five percent revenue growth, forty five percent growth in vehicles. They're doing pretty darn well. But the real kicker is Tesla is posting sixteen percent net margins, while GM and Ford are posting 5 and 6 percent uh, relatively. So they have a lot of runway, a lot to like if you look at the numbers. And I think especially after the downdraft, they're going to be looking at a good 2023. Yes, yeah, so Steve, there's a lot to like about those numbers. And for now, at least, it still dominates the EV market. But looking forward at a time when competition is coming online, is this really the time for him to be this distracted, this stretched? <laughs> well, the short answer is no. Focus is a key thing. And what he's got to realize is he has a permanent place in history for revolutionizing the global auto industry. He has almost single handedly moved the world into an electric revolution in vehicles, which is good for the planet and good for the share price. But managing five companies at once is tough. All of the uh, uh, things going on at Twitter are not helpful. I'm hoping he'll stay focused on making great cars, put the political intrigue aside. There's competition going in at a historic level. Volkswagen and the Chinese in particular are really going to stretch Tesla. And Tesla shareholders need every bit of his attention to help make sure that the company is successful with the Cybertruck rollout, bringing new products to market next year. Steve, it, it seems to me, from, from where I sit, that Elon Musk is getting farther and farther away from that advice. Um, you know, he, I'll mention he just got booed at a Dave Chappelle show in San Francisco, I think, last night. And that's only interesting to me because Dave Chappelle's crowd is a free speech crowd, right? I mean, if you're still going to yeah. Dave Chappelle shows after everything, and Elon Musk thinks that he's leaning into the free speech message, message, but the fact that he'd be booed for minutes on end there might suggest that he's miscalculating even, you know, his brand uh, strength among his core audience. Does that mean that there's some risk eventually to how many Teslas he can sell, no matter how good the car is? Look, I think there's no getting away from that. One of the things that Tesla's done just about better than anybody is created one of the most powerful brands in the world. They are the upstart competitor, the ones that took on GM and Ford and the Toyota and proved them wrong. Now, as he moves further and further, into politics. I think it's hurting him and the brand. I hope he gets back to focusing on great vehicles. He's doing that better than anyone. And this is the key time, because one of the things you didn't talk about is we're heading toward what is, for many, the most important smackdown in the global transportation industry, and that is who owns the short-haul trucking market. As you know, Ford F-150, biggest selling vehicle in America for over 40 years, electric or gas. But now Tesla's come on with the Cybertruck with a extraordinary 1.2 million unit backlog. If they're able to launch that in the scale that I think they will be in 2023, you'll start to see the first larger numbers come out in Q3, I believe. That is a game changer. That's why he's brought Tom Zhu in, the mastermind manufacturing genius from China. And think about this for a minute. The China facility in Shanghai producing 40% of all Tesla vehicles today this is the guy who got the plant up and running in 13 months, 10 million square feet facility. If he can do what he did in the Austin plant, uh, what he did in Shanghai, that'll be a game changer for Tesla. We'll see. I hope he dials the politics down. Yeah, well, China is a great point, uh, especially since we're watching other mega cap companies like Apple try to diversify their supply chain. If, in fact, there's a, a market a degradation in U.S.-China relations. How much vulnerability does Tesla carry, do you think? Right now, a lot. Again, 40 percent of their vehicles coming from China. If there's any sort of hiccup in U.S.-China relations, Tesla is in a world of hurt. That's why they're moving quickly, looking at other markets you've seen in the press, Canada, South Korea, 
uh, Indonesia, I think it's highly likely Tesla will break ground in at least one, if not two of those places. So they want to diversify like everybody else in the world. It's going to be fascinating.